Okay, so in this video, we want to make a few remarks about the definite integral when the bounds of integration are variables. So let us first evaluate this definite integral, of course using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we must find first an antiderivative with respect to t to the function t squared plus 1. Applying the power rule, of course, this gives us t cubed over 3 plus t. And you can easily check that this is the right antiderivative. If you differentiate this function with respect to t, again using the power rule, you will obtain t squared plus 1. We must then evaluate this function from 2x to x cubed. So first replacing t by x cubed. So if you replace t by x cubed, you get x cubed cubed, which is x9. So x9 over 3 plus x cubed minus the antiderivative, but now replacing t by 2x. So 2x cubed, we cubed both 2 and x. So we get 8x cubed over 3 plus 2x. We can now perform the subtraction and subtract the corresponding powers of x. Single x9, so this stays the same, x9 over 3. Now the power of x3, there's 8 over 3. Now here think of 1 as 3 over 3. So 3 minus 8 minus 5. So minus 5 over 3 x cubed and finally minus 2x. <coughs> so what's interesting here, this was a very simple integration problem, but the result is clearly a function of x and not a function of t. So here t is a dummy variable. You can replace t by any other variable but x, and the result will always be the same function of x. So imagine replacing t by u, so if this was u squared plus 1 du, then you would find an antiderivative to u squared plus 1 with respect to u. The result would of course be u cubed over 3 plus u. And when you replace u by x cubed, you get the exact same expression. And when you replace u by 2x, the exact same expression. So it is really key here to remember that this is a function of x, not a function of t, as t is a dummy variable. Since we have a function of x, we can give it a simpler looking name. Call it, say, h of x. And now we have a function of x, so we can ask, well, what is its derivative? So h prime of x is equal to, and of course we differentiate the simpler end result, so using the power rule, we get 9 over 3 x8 minus 5 thirds times 3x squared minus 2. And if we simplify, we're left with 3x8 minus 5x squared minus 2. So very simple problem of differentiation. We had a definite integral with variable bounds of integration, and those bounds were with respect to x. So we obtained a function of x, and we found its derivative simply with the power rule of differentiation. Now here's a question for you. We had a definite integral. We first evaluated the definite integral, then we found the derivative. But there should be something that bothers you about this, and it should be the following. Did we have to first integrate if our objective was to then differentiate. After all, the derivative is the inverse operation of integration. So if we first integrate, then differentiate, both operations should kind of cancel each other out. So let's see if we can find a simpler solution to this problem. And the problem, of course, is to find the derivative of this function of x. And the solution is remarkably simple. We will again apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, but in a more theoretical sense, whereas this was a very practical application, we actually found the antiderivative to the initial function. What we will now state 
is the fundamental theorem of calculus, but in its theoretical form. So we will not find the antiderivative. So let me rewrite h of x here. This will be our second solution. So if we apply now, again, theoretically, the fundamental theorem of calculus here, the result will be uppercase F of x cubed minus uppercase F of 2x. Whereas before we found uppercase F, simply t cubed over 3 plus t, we will now simply state the fact that all we need from F is to be an antiderivative to the original function. So the derivative of f should be t squared plus 1. So since the derivative is a function of t, we'll write big F prime of t is t squared plus 1. So as the derivative of uppercase f is the function that we are integrating, this of course is the same as saying that uppercase f is an antiderivative of t squared plus 1. So all we did here is do the exact same thing as we did in the first solution, but we never found explicitly the antiderivative. We're simply stating the fundamental theorem of calculus, that we can transform the definite integral as a difference of two antiderivatives to the original function. So now we'll find the derivative of h, but not thinking of h in this form, but instead in this form. This is our second solution. So the derivative of h will be the derivative of this expression. And now this becomes a simple calculus one problem. We will arrive, and you'll see, at the exact same answer that we initially arrived at, but without ever actually integrating t squared plus 1. So if we differentiate here, and we have to be careful, there is a composition f of x cubed f of 2x, so we have to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside function first, so big F prime of x cubed times the chain rule, derivative of x cubed 3x squared minus derivative of the outside function f prime of 2x chain rule times the derivative of the inside function times 2. And you see, even though we haven't found what uppercase F is, as uppercase F is an antiderivative to the original function, we know that its derivative is t squared plus 1. And this is true for any t, so we can now make a substitution, replacing t in the first place by x cubed. So if you replace here t by x cubed, x cubed squared is x6, so we get x6 plus 1. Times 3x squared, minus, and now we replace t by 2x. If you square 2x, you get 4x squared, plus 1, times 2. Let's multiply things out. So we'll get first 3x8 plus 3x squared minus 2 times this, so minus 8x squared minus 2. And if we simplify, we're left with 3x8. 3x squared minus 8x squared minus 5x squared and minus 2 the exact same derivative as we found in our first solution. What was interesting here is that since we had this feeling that if we're going to differentiate the integral, both operations should kind of cancel out, we shouldn't really have to find the antiderivative. And as it turns out, we were correct. We simply have to state formally the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we never have to find the antiderivative as ultimately all we need is the derivative of the antiderivative, which is, of course, the original function that we are trying to integrate. And you might wonder, well, what's the use of the second solution? 
if we can simply first explicitly find the antiderivative and then just differentiate the result. Well, let's consider another problem where it will be a simple looking problem where we need the second solution. So suppose we look at the following now integral. So again we have a function of x as z just as t before is a dummy variable. And you might wonder, well, can we use here the first solution? Can we find the derivative of this function simply by first finding the antiderivative, then evaluating, subtracting, then differentiating? And the answer is no. Even though the function here is surprisingly simple looking, it is actually impossible to find an antiderivative to this function using elementary methods. So here, we cannot find the antiderivative to e to the z squared, so we have to fall back on the second solution using formally the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is big F of root of x minus big F of sine of x. As long, of course, as uppercase F is an antiderivative to the function we're trying to integrate, so the derivative of uppercase F should be e to the z squared, so we'll write f prime of z. And of course when we differentiate h of x, we differentiate this version of it, not the original form. And again we apply the chain rule. So we get f prime of root of x times the derivative of root of x, which is 1 over 2 root of x, minus f prime of sine of x times the chain rule, the derivative of sine of x, which is cos of x. And now we make the substitution, replacing first z by root of x. So we get e to the, and root of x squared of course is simply x, so e to the x over 2 root of x, minus now replacing z by sine of x, so e to the sine squared of x, times cos of x. And so we found the derivative of the initial definite integral without ever finding the antiderivative. And again, I want to stress that this is important here. Even though this is a simple looking function, it is literally impossible to find an antiderivative to e to the z squared using elementary methods. So the only way we can differentiate this expression is to apply formally the fundamental theorem of calculus and then differentiate not the original form of the integral but the form given us by the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we find the derivative of the function without ever finding the antiderivative to the original function. And that's it.